welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Roman Sanzo. Oh boy, um, also joining me today is Silver Quill. Puberty love, it's puberty love. Oh no. Or great in Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. <laughs> oh no, a microphone would kill me if I had one. Oh, I can't do your cheap team voice from The Simpsons. You, you know that character? It's, I'll have to ask my supervisor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the guy. Wow, you're doing good. My God, you're greasy. <laughs> Mr. Manager, help! <laughs> oh, please. So, anywho, in today's episode, we are going to do... Or, we are going to review Season 8, Episode 11... Meltdown. In this episode, Spike undergoes a developmental stage of dragons called the Molt. And according to Smolder, its side effect compels a Molder's family to kick them out of the house. Oh no. Such cruelty. Oh no. (laughs) I'm starting to see where all the dragon issues come into play. (laughs) No wonder they have personality quirks. Yep, yep. Oh boy. Such strange things these dragons are. But anywho, before we start, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what did you think? Well, this was a fun episode in my eyes. For a little time, it's spinning its wheels as Spike is going through the motions of discovering all these terrible things. Then you get to the increased stakes as you find out that this is going to attract predators. I mean, come on, this... Bad enough, you gotta go through puberty. Now imagine if your pimples summoned wolves. <laughs> oh god, no. That's bad. That's just bad. And so then things go into high gear as Spike has to confront a major menace. And then, son of a gun, it's the grand change. And yet this time, well, let's not get too far in, but you slap a pair of wings on a character. <laughs> and the fandom's now like, meh. We've really either mellowed out or become numb at this point. Did it use okay before I ask you a certain question? I'm gonna leave that for the review section because it's a really good joke, and I think most people who are hearing this knows. But you know, I'm not gonna spoil it till then. So yeah, as for me, I like this episode a lot. It's one of those episodes where finally we get to see a character development. Yay! And Spike here, well. He's always gotten the short end of the stick in most situations. And yeah, here too. <laughs> most episodes revolves around Spike getting embarrassed, humiliated, or just awkward. And yeah, it's another normal Spike episode. But good. It's good because Spike is not being the source of his own trouble. I mean, his body is, but that's not exactly something you can control. Oh yeah, This is that. very different from Princess Spike. And and uh, owls well that ends well. Yeah. Or secret of my excess. Yeah. It's one of those scenarios where, for the first time ever, Spike is not responsible for what's going on. Well, technically he is, but he's not controlling it. Yeah. Curse you, hormones! <laughs> Yay! Oh God, it'll be awkward for that moment. You could just mention Twilight uh, sitting him down and saying, "Spike, um, please sit down. We need to talk." You know the bird and the bees? Which should technically offend Twilight on a scientific level. How so? Well, birds and bees do not copulate. (laughs) Yeah, not with each other, but you know what I mean. Uh, But you you want to know how how it could get even more awkward? Have Sludge come back and say, Spike, I'm here to teach you about the birds and the bees. Oh, no, not him. We'll get to him later. But nah, it's... Oh, yeah. Ember. Ember comes down and says, Well, Spike, you're a dragon, and dragon do things differently. And, oh boy, this is awkward. <laughs> and the truth is, I'm kind of Sundre towards you, but I think you're kind of cute. So, <laughs> when you're a little older, just get like 10 jars of mayonnaise and come find me. <laughs> Why am I in this? Oh, God, no. Oh, boys. Okay, anywho. <clears throat> Uh, first impressions are out of the way, and well, if you have not watched this episode yet, please go do and watch it before hearing us talk about it. Welcome back, how do you like the episode? I hope you do, and well, here is our review. Give me a second. We start off the episode with our heroes having a nice walk with 
his quote-unquote girlfriend, but not really. He's too scared to admit it or too scared to profess his love. But yes, um, walking around with Rarity to go and find Peewee, the phoenix. Yay. Gaspity Gad, you mean he wasn't a throwaway character? I made a joke when I did a panel on Dragon Quest. It's like, this character was entirely pointless. <laughs> not really. Oh, wow. Oh, man. It's one of those scenarios where Peewee was kind of awesome, but I don't know why they had to change the status quo because it will be interesting for Spike to have other responsibilities, like taking care of a pet. But yeah, I, I think the, uh, whatchamacallit, this designers or... I'm not 100% sure who did it. Storyboard artists, probably? Uh, kind of said that... Well, not really said, but they show it in picture where they showed Spike sending Pee-wee back to their parents. Yeah, after he did a lousy job of caring for him. And granted... It was just too much responsibility for a young dragon all at once. No shame in that and good that he loved Pee-wee enough to let him go. Mm, but I'm glad that they, they bring it back to say, hey, we didn't just up and forget him forever. Just He's just in a different uh, hangout. Mm -hmm. And boy, has he grown. Yeah, he grows fast. Well, it's kind of funny. Pound and Pumpkin Cake are still talking baby talk. Uh, and here's Pee-wee, almost a full-grown uh, phoenix. Yep, yep. And by the way, uh, when was Pee Wee's last appearance? Are we counting um, the photos of Spike returning him to his family? I think that's the last one. Let's count that as the last one. Then that was season three just for... Yeah, season three just for sidekicks. Hmm. Wow. Okay, so technically it's been a while now. And oof. Uh, the more I think about it, the what you call this time lapse of how Equestria works is confusing. Don't try to understand it. It'll only make your head explode. Yeah. And talking about explosions, the way Rarity is talking to Spike here is really funny. Like, at first, you don't really notice it, but those certain quirks, like Rarity's raising an eyebrow, looking at Spike, and pouting a little bit, and, like, walking around, and Rarity just grabs him and says, Spike, what the hell are you doing? I will not be tormented. <laughs> oh, but... Oh, that close-up on Spike's irritated skin. Oof. Yep, yep, yep. It looks... I, I'm feeling uncomfortable for him. Yep. And, well, <laughs> it's it's kind of nice where Rarity says, Oh, I, I have I sometimes still have the odd blemish here and there. Uh, Zakura has a really good cream for it. And now that we've mentioned Zakura, she must appear. It's Chekhov's zebra. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, anywho, uh, we head to the nest where, well... They found Pee-wee's parents, and hey, there's Pee-wee. Yay. Except that at first they can't find Pee-wee because he's moved out of the nest. Yeah. I imagine the, the, the Phoenix couple is like, ha ha, we're empty nesters again. Now we're kings of the forest like once more. Yep, until Pee-wee flies by and surprise Rarity and Spike. And yeah, he's just a few feet away. And poor Spike, I mean, just a beak to a to an irritated scale. I have suffered through puberty. I know how it feels. So yeah. my heart is with you, Spike. Yeah, yeah. We, we all been there. We all been there. But anywho, uh, the reason why they're here is Rarity wants Phoenix Feather for her dress. And yeah, Peewee's glad enough to drop two. So yay and stuff. And yeah, at the same time, Rarity's been saying, Spike, I, I think you should visit Sakura because... That thing is not looking too well and stuff. So, yeah. And Spike just says, ah, it'll be okay when I wake up. Like, you know, it's one of those things. So, yeah. Famous last words. You jinxed it. Indeed. But anywho, the next day, Spike's in bed in his cuddly little bed. Really cute and like. And Twilight's there to wake him up because it's nearly noon. And oh my goodness, why, why has he not wake up yet? And yeah. Twilight's there to wake him up and is shocked to see Spike's face. And yeah, told him to, you know what, uh, you, you should probably um, stay to bed. Like, yeah, stuff. What is it? I'm, I'm thinking of uh, the original Batman movie, the Joker, The Mirror. <laughs> the Mirror! <laughs> just st Instead of screaming, he just starts laughing maniacally. Twilight backs into a corner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, but talking about Batman, like yesterday when I was, not really yesterday, but last Friday, I was at a um, store, something like that. It was a restaurant, and they were playing Batman. The Tim Burton, was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Tim Burton Batman. And, oh my goodness, this is fun. Like, I haven't seen this in a while. And the first thing that came to my mind was the Joker holding Bob and says, You are mine. Number one. That was fun. And he got his own toy. <laughs> yep. And funny enough, he's the only one that didn't die. Well, good for Bob. He deserves a happy ending. Yeah. So now I'm, but now you got me picturing Twilight holding Spike going, You are my number one. And I think your view as a little brother, maybe son, it's kind of up in the air. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anywho, yeah, uh, carrying on, um, Spike is shocked by the revelation and kind of wants to stick into bed. And yeah, he doesn't want to get up because he's embarrassed by his breakout. And yeah, uh, boys, he's very, very stressful. And Twilight just says, oh, it, it's all right, Spike. It could be, it could be stress. And when I was young, I remember having a bit of a breakout when I was going to have an exam with Princess Celestia which I think she didn't have any. And the menace in her face. <laughs> oh, the resentment. Oh, you you hate your idol. Yeah. It, now Luna's probably like off to the side going, that's how it feels, Twilight! That's how it feels! <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, um, Twilight just says, we probably you should go visit Zakura. She has a cream for it. Yeah, Zakura has a cream. Like, check off Zebra. <laughs> Zakura, the, the, the get out of jail free card for writing. Yep. But actually, she's more hard to write because of rhyming. Oh, but that's part of the fun. I know. But anywho, Spike goes to the mirror and looks at himself and tries to pop one out. And oh, God, no. Yeah, I don't think they'd want to animate that. Yeah, please don't. Like, in all honesty, if you have a breakout, don't, don't pinch it. Don't pinch it. Like, yeah, no. But anywho, the, re- whole, the whole reason why Twilight's there is to ask Spike to assist him with her classes. And while Twilight is trying to give a speech, Spike just burps out a flame and is uncontrollable. Oh no. You gotta think, puberty is a lot harder when you have fire breath. Can you imagine the use of our of our various countries uh, all belched flame when they were going through a change? Ugh. We'd, be, we'd be a land of ashes. Yep. Oh my goodness, those uncontrollable hormones and whatnot. Oof, no. But anywho, uh, Twilight Sparkle says, No problem, I made multiple copies of the note you just burned down, so yay. Um, how about you just go visit Zakura? Like, really, like, or probably just stay indoors or something like that. And yeah. <clears throat> but he doesn't do that. Yep, I, I think he wanted to go to Sakura's, was it? Well, he goes to the Friendship School, which... Seems okay. Granted, it's mostly crystal, so I guess it can't burn down. But there's a lot of flammable books in yonder. True, true. Yeah, that didn't make sense. Like at first, I thought okay, uh, Spike was coming out of his quote unquote house because um, reasons. But now nah, he's just hanging out in front of the school. Like he should probably hit the across ASAP. You know. Yeah, but still. On well, while he's sitting near the bridge, Rarity comes by and kind of likes seeing uh, Spike's getup. Very, what's the author name of the mystery book that Rarity likes? Ooh, I don't know the author, but it's Shadow Spade. Ah, yes, Shadow Spade. Yes, very Shadow Spade. She likes and whatnot. And yeah, um, Spike here is kind of losing his voice. His volume is uncontrollable, and wanting to get away from Rarity, he says like, oh, uh, I can't stay long. I need to do a tour of the school. And <laughs> remember what I said, the universe hating Spike? Yes. Upon saying that, Pinkie Pie comes along and says, what? I thought I was the one to do the tour. Well, it seems like you doing it. And she jumps off. Yay. Now, now Spike has to do the tour. <laughs> By the way, uh, I was checking over the transcript of this episode and I got it backwards. Twilight actually says he should leave the castle ah. and go somewhere less flammable. <laughs> and again, the 
despite the crystal setup, the school is quite flammable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very flammable. This this does not seem like a good idea. Yeah, and that line there is kind of key. So remember that, folks. It's something very important that I miss out. Yes. So anywho, upon the tour, uh, Spike is not giving a really good tour because his volume is not there and he is scratchy and stuff. And the, what you call this, um, the tourist people, whatever they are, or tourist ponies, ask like, um, well, do dragons do that? Like, is that normal? And yeah. It's like you're, you're asking the worst possible dragon because he has very little experience with dragons. True that, true that. But yeah, still tour goes on and they head into the library. And funny enough, um, his voice is not really there and whatnot and stuff. And he screams at the top of his lung, stating that this is the library and it has a lot of books and our students like to study here. And yeah, uh, upon screaming, our student six comes by and says, Yo, Spike, tone it down. We are trying to study for tests. And yeah, Universe hits Spike. And burns his costume off. And Smolder looks at him in a very eyebrow raising way. Perplexed? Yes. What is this I see? Yes, yes. Er, I'm going to talk like this all day. Oh, <laughs> but anyway. it's still better than puberty. <laughs> so, anywho, Spike is embarrassed and runs off and hides in the broom closet. Smolder flies by and says, Yo, Spike, uh, you know what? I'm just going to summarize. She just comes in and tells Spike that I know what you're going through. It's called um, molt, molting. And every dragon goes through it. It's kind of a rite of passage, um, puberty and whatnot. And in the Dragonlands, once you hit puberty, you get kicked out of the house and you have to fend for yourself. It's the dragon way. And side effects include uncontrollable volume, burping of random fires, and have a really pungent odor that attracts predators. So good luck. Have fun. You're probably going to die. Yep. <laughs> oh. I'll probably kill you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yes. That's in a nutshell what Smolder says. And yeah, and Smolder has a brother. Hmm, okay. Well, who apparently got kicked out. Again, this explains why dragons are usually very hostile. If part of your if part of your maturation just involves your parents throwing you into the great unknown, two predators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I probably have more than a few chips on my shoulders, too. True, true. I mean, it's not like Heihachi Mishima threw down his son to a volcano just to prove a point. I mean, come on. It's not that bad, right? Uh, given how things worked out for him, probably not. <laughs> uh, take a joke, people. Go watch Taken 7's Let's Play. It's fun. I'm looking at the gallery on the MLP wiki, mm -hmm. and there's the scene where Pinkie Pie intrudes just to say, hey, this needs more funny commentary. <laughs> yep. Uh, but there's this there's this scene where her head is like three quarters turned, and she's got this big, big smile and tiny <laughs> little eyes, and it's Five Nights at Freddy's level of creepy. <laughs> it's Pinky. You just don't question it. <laughs> I, I don't know. If I saw that in real life, I'd be like, you know what? Bring on the Predators. <laughs> Bring on the giant birds and wolves. Can't be half as scary as this. Oh, yeah. Oh, but still, uh, Spike here has to, well, do something about it. And he goes to Sakura. But putting a pause on this. Like, Smolder should have explained this in a nicer way. Would you agree? Oh, but it's Smolder. I mean, it, part of Smolder's character is that she is still governed by the dragon way of doing things, which is usually to be very, very direct, to borderline blunt. <laughs> yes. Of course, she also does it with that patented smolder lean, which I've learned to appreciate. Yep, yep. She has just the right angle to lean and look nonchalant. <laughs> yep, yep. The funny thing is that it probably requires a tremendous amount of chalantness <laughs> to do something like that. You've got to practice to look that not care. Yeah. And uh, funny enough, uh, there was a poll on EQD where they asked, what do you want Smolder and Spike's relationship to be? 
uh, varying from just friends, mentor, uh, lovers. Uh, they not interested, just separate them away and whatnot. And I think friends were the most popular vote. Well, I'd ship it either way. Mm, I'll, in all honesty. Because I can. Because <laughs> I can. In all honesty, I would like them to be mentors. Like Spike here got no dragon role model and Smolder here would be the perfect role model for him. I don't know. It's like one day Spike wakes up and he sees Smolder is like, oh, wow. Ah, my sound box has died. <laughs> there we go. Uh, you, you would think that. You would think that. But... I am shipping Spike with Ember. Well, there you go. That's a that's an even wider age gap, though. It's like Spike is slowly working his way down. There's Rarity, who is pretty much an adult to his child. Ember, who is post-adolescence, but still on the younger side. And then Smolder, who is uh, just in her late teens, I think. Yeah. Just pa- past the puberty, but not quite settled as a as a fully rounded person yet yeah i think they i think what they call smolder is tween well maybe next season spike will meet a young dragon who's about his age and oh the shipping that shall commence <laughs> uh, but anywho on uh, but anywho on pausing and continuing back with the story spike goes to sakura asking for help with his condition and sakura says uh you know what uh, let's see let's see let's see uh, I got this cream here, probably, that will help you with your odor because, you know, uh, the wild animals want to eat you and whatnot. So, yeah, let's try and do that. And before he gets the cream, Rarity pops in. And, oh my goodness, Rarity, there's something wrong with her. Yeah, this is one of the weirder things. Phoenix feathers make you deaf? What? It could be the effect no, really. of the what? feather. I, I don't know. It's one of those scenarios where this is something me- uh, mythological where probably I got no idea. It's not. It, it could be true. It could not be true. It could be the writer trying to do something. I mean, it's kind of out of the blue if you think about it. Let's see, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a quick online search just thinking of apparently allergies can cause hearing loss. To the outer ear, allergic reactions can cause itching and swelling of both the outer ear and ear canal. Uh, let's see, middle ear. If swelling blocks the opening to your middle ear, your oh, eustachian tube, eustachian tube, may not be able to drain properly. This can cause the fluid and pressure to build up, giving you the feeling of fullness in the affected ear and providing a perfect breeding ground for bacteria and subsequent infection. I'll stop there because you're all probably going, ew, 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 ew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boys. But anywho, yeah. Uh, in this case, so uh, rarity here somehow is uh, affected by the phoenix feather, which Sakura says, yeah, um, I happened to come across this one before. Yeah, and here's a potion. Put two drops or one drop twice a day, something like that. And you'll probably be good. Okay. And while this is happening, Spike sneaks out of the hut and hides. Sakura comes out trying to find where Spike is. And he's hiding under a mask. And Sakura says, Yo, Spike, Rarity is gone and you don't need to hide anymore. Spike just says, I'm not hiding from Rarity. I'm hiding from that. And guess what? There's a rock. If you smell if you smell what the rock is flying. Yep. It's not R-O-C-K. It's just R-O-C. Yep. And that is an actual mythological creature from India. So large it could swoop off with an elephant. Mm-hmm. And I've read a bit of it. And it's somehow related with a Garuda. Which is Indonesian's mythical creature. I'm not sure if they're related or not. But it's interesting. Indeed it is. I, well, I always love mythology. I love it when My Little Pony brings mythology uh, from our world into their setting. True, true. Especially when it's like diverse. We've had uh, Aoi Zodal, which I believe was uh, American uh, tribes mythology. I think Mayan culture? Yeah, it was Mayan culture. Something to do with something. I, I don't remember. And the trihorn bunyip is from Australia. I thought there was one Scotland, no? 
No, I, be- I think it's Australian. Yeah, yeah, probably. Their version of the Boogeyman. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what else? And um, all right, let's see here. What other? What else? We haven't gotten to there yet, but uh, there's a very big oddity in uh, the end in Friend. The talking frog creature. Talking frog creature? Yeah. The one with the terrible breath that they have to oh, get the that information one, out that of. Oh, that one. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, as far as I know, that has no mythological origin. It's more of a a role-playing game race. <laughs> True. And, well, it's creatures... It's the lexicon of creatures. Like you don't really, they don't really need to stick in one part of the creature manual. They can probably go array. So yay, <laughs> maybe they'll encounter a beholder. Who knows? Uh, let's see here. Bugbear is D English mythology. Oh really? No. Yes. Oh, okay. It was designed to scare disobeying children again. Like the Boogeyman. Mm, mm, mm. Cerberus is Roman. Changelings is, I believe, Scottish. Or Irish. I'll have to mix that up. Ooh, there was the Chim... Or you could probably ask Maddie about it. Uh, but if I, if it turns out to be Irish and I assumed it's Scottish, she will not be pleased with me. <laughs> I thought she was not oh, no. pleased with you anymore. <laughs> like, what's the risk? There, there will be blood. My blood. <laughs> All around. Oh, goodness me. Well... But, we'll take we'll we'll paint Scotland red with hippogriff blood. Oh no! But anywho, carrying on, uh, we see that the rock is coming down, trying to nab Spike as a juicy meal. Zakura says, "Run!" They do, and Spike here is well. He's thinking logically, and he's really, really man. I won't say manly. What was it? Brave or hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? Heroic? Not really, but. He's just... Sacrificial? <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. He says, Zakura, you run that side. He's just chasing after me. And Spike says, oh god, I didn't think this through. <laughs> Climbs up a tree and yeah, he, things are not going well. Uh, Zakura comes by and says, Spike, get down to the tree. That's not a really good place to hide. And oops, Rock gets her. And he's... Well, like I said, Rock gets her and Spike is just... Screaming and yelling and scratching and glowing. What? Glowing? Is the map calling him again? Well, he isn't quite the fr- problem. Maybe he's supposed to make friends with the rock. That would be something. Yeah, probably. Get Kevin Hart. That'll do well. The greatest power of them all. Hart. <laughs> oh, yes. But anywho, um, Spike runs and bumps into Rarity. And like I mentioned before, Rarity is a bit confused with the dosage of the... Eardrops. Is it twice a day or twice a uh, once a day? You, you you know like two drops a day or one drop morning and night. It's so on so like that. It doesn't really matter because Rarity gets captured by the rock, and so does Spike a bit. And yeah, boys. But Rarity has been in this situation before, and yeah, it doesn't get easy. <laughs> Let's see, but at least she has a, a a friend with her, Zakura, in the same talon. <laughs> Even Zakura points out this seems highly unlikely. Yep, but doesn't really matter because uh, they're together in the claw and stuff. Oh god, no! And Spike is somehow captured too, but frees himself by burping a huge fire, and he falls down and somehow manages to land on every branch which kind of breaks his fall hey i'm okay my spine broke my fall <laughs> also the fall broke my spine <laughs> oh god no spike but funny enough twilight strolls by and asks spike what the hell are you doing here and spike just says problem itchy rock coming down to grab me and also um help oh, that's rather direct it's a bullet point <laughs> Yes. And looking at the situation, Twilight just powers up and flies and do laser beam, laser beam. And two magic, two magic. <laughs> uh, I fire magic missiles into the darkness. Darkness. You fire magic missile at Charlie Murphy. <laughs> so anywho, Spike here is just scratching, itchy and all. And suddenly he stops being itchy and 
Um, well, he stopped being itchy and, and it's not glowing anymore. And it seems that, yay, effect is stopped but somehow he's turning into stone. What? This is the worst puberty thing ever. I don't know. It Comparatively, at least it's done in a few days, it seems. I mean, you try going through four years of high school with your voice changing. It's not fun. <laughs> I've been there before. But anywho, within a few seconds, uh, Spike is encased in what we could assume to be rocks. Well, they did say, they did call it stone scales, so I guess they were being rather literal. Mm -hmm. And once he breaks out of said cocoon, let's just call it that, he explodes and is revealed to have wings. And Spike is happy about it. Here's the thing. In this episode, Larson was not involved. Josh Haber was. And... Yeah, I know, but it's more fun to say, Larson! Yep. And didn't you met Larson at a con once, and what did you ask? Ah, uh, Winnie City. And he was going through the uh, vending hall during a quiet period, so I asked him, would it be okay if I got a recording of you just saying, it's not my fault, I explained, it's Spike, he's got wings, it's the joke everyone's going to be making, uh, and he's like, yeah, sure, that's fine. So I did a recording of him just saying, hey, it's not my fault this time. <laughs> and it, it, Mitch is a really cool guy, so uh, he had no problem with that. Awesome. Did he remember you? Mm, I think so, but not like, we're not like, he knows Race Best and Saber Spark uh, the most out of this fandom, I think. They, they are at the same conventions, and they make jokes to each other all the time. Uh, still, it was a fun video. Like people at home, uh, Silver Quill did a um, review. Was it? Was it? What was it called? A quick look or something like that. Oh, my Silver Quilted. Ah, yes, the Quilted thing. Yeah, so he did a Silver Quilted. Go watch it. It's pretty entertaining, especially the Larson part. Like, oh boy, that was fun. Who knew? Mm -hmm. But anywho, getting back on track, Spike gets wing, and automatically. If you get wings, you automatically know how to fly. Kind of. Well, he's doing better than Twilight did at first start. Yep, yep, true that, true that. But it's still a stressful situation where life matters. And he needs to save his best friend, Rarity and Sakura. And he flies up in the sky and is flying side by side with Twilight, who is shocked and awed by saying... How? What? Spike? Wings? How? You're the one to talk, Twilight. Yep. But anywho, Spike explains purity. Yep, purity. <laughs> oh, boys. And that would be enough to make anyone give up. It's just like, oh, purity. Okay, moving on, moving <laughs> on. Goodbye. Yep. So anywho, Spike and Twilight kind of um, takes down the rock. And yeah, the way that they do it, Colonel Sanders would be proud. <laughs> you made one mistake. You left it alive. <laughs> yep. But anywho, with that shocking burn, the rock releases the, his grip on Sakura and Rarity, and they fall to their and they fall to their doom. The end. Not really. Well, that would be an interesting way. <laughs> yeah, but no, not really. Because Twilight and Spike rushes down and dramatically saves them. Yay. Although, here's the funny thing I realized. We've had Sakura with the swamp fever. Mm -hmm. And now she's been abducted by a rock. Mm -hmm. Used to be that Sakura was the get-out-of-jail card. She'd have the cure or the idea to get the ponies back on track. Now they're, I think they're swinging the pendulum the other way in that she needs a lot of, she needs assistance now. And that's not a bad thing. It's just a noticeable shift. Well, it's, I don't know. It's, it's a good way to get her more into the show because if you think about it, if we use Zakura as the Deus Ex Machina, that'll get tiresome. And everybody knows, oh, problem of the week, call Zakura. She knows what to do. And this spice things up a bit because Yazakura kind of have the answer, but not all of it. And in this situation, it's just for Spike and his puberty problem. 
But hey, um, it's kind of not Spike's fault that things happen this way. And he addresses his uh, fear about being forced out of home, made to go away. Mm. Abandonment has always been his chief fear. Yeah, it's been there since season one because I I think being the only dragon in a house of ponies seems to be a, an oddity because he feels like he's he doesn't really belong and tries hard to fit in. And luckily for him that he has that support group, like his six friends, and now he has his D&D buddies and... Like, he has a really good support group. And once he explains the current situation where in the Dragonlands, once you hit puberty, you have to strike out on your own and stuff. And this was hammered in by Rarity at the very beginning where she says that, oh, um, sometimes ponies need to uh, strike out on their own. And also a bit from Twilight where he says, Oh, get out of the house. You stink. And on top of that, there's the smolder story where <laughs> my brother got kicked out ASAP like good riddance. I love him, but see ya. Yep. And Twilight just says, Spike, no. We're not in the dragon land and we don't do things the dragon way. You're our family. You're part of the school of friendship or my f- house the sparkle things. Yes. So, you don't need to worry. Give a hug. Yay. And with that, Spike is really happy about his current situation and gets the pony back ride. Yay, pony back ride. And Twilight just says, what are you doing? You have wings. You can fly. So, yeah, but I'm a teenager, so I have no energy and I get really lazy and I like to loaf. <laughs> get used to it, sister. <laughs> yeah. And with that little giggle, they went their separate ways. The next day, Rarity's hearing is okay, and Spike is assisting him with his wings. And sorry, Spike is assisting her with her dress. Because, uh, well, R- Rarity here is kind of a jerk, or uh, kind of a meanie, because, yay, now that Spike has wings, I have a model for any dress size. Yay. Well, in fairness, she she knows an opportunity when she sees it. True. And Spike, one day Spike will either accept his crush or, I don't know, channel fanfic powers. Yep. Oh, well. He'll get over it somehow. Yep, true. That There's multiple ships for Spike. Just insert one. Huh. But with that, episode ends. So let's go to, well, discussion and final thoughts. Silver, what do you think? Well, puberty stinks, but I don't think anyone uh, will contest that. But yeah, puberty is nature's way of saying that it secretly hates us. Oh, well, that that is not fun. Yes. I don't know. I, I like this episode. It puts in more lore to the world that they're in. Now that we know that dragon hits puberty in a specific manner, uh, that's kind of cool. And we know that there's a rock in the world, so that's also cool. And in this situation right now, we could insert any amount of creatures and it will be cool. We have, what, the sea ponies or hippogriffs. We get the changelings. And we also get, spoilers, Kirin. And Kirins are interesting characters to themselves. I mean, the version of the Kirin... And that is what, uh, a Kirin is kind of a dragon horse kind of thing? Yes, indeed. Yeah, kind of cool, kind of cool. I believe Chi- th- I believe that's Chinese mythology. So I th- we got this grand sampling of world world creatures, but you ever notice that basically all of human imagination comes down to, let's take the scariest thing we can come up with and add scarier parts to it. Oh, yeah, like that one creature down in Australia, it has a duck bill, but it has a beaver tail. And it lays eggs, but it's actually a mammal? What the hell, man? And it has poison. Don't forget the poison. No, what the hell, man? And by the way, if you're confused, well, we're the... talking about a platypus. <laughs> and that's proof that God has a sense of humor. <laughs> no, I think that proves that God really, really wants to put a danger zone in Australia. Right. And 
Lo, the Lord decreed, let there be a highway to the danger zone <laughs> in Australia. <laughs> oh, that reminds me of a picture of, oh, I forgot what picture it was, but it was really Australia. Uh, Dingle eating a shark while a snake is there devouring something I don't remember. Goodness. You know. Oh, sorry, but all I'm thinking of right now is Archer going, woo, danger zone. <laughs> oh, but still, but still. But yeah, um, Silver, what else, man? Like, um, this episode is kind of fun. That's true. Oh, it's very fun. I mean, okay, for a little bit, it's just spinning its wheels as Spike is going places, but without any real goal in mind. So I can understand if you're, if it loses a lot of energy at the start. This is him just hiding. It's only until Smolder enters the scene and explains things to him that we really, really uh get to understand what he's facing mm-hmm. and so then he goes to see sakura because now he there's a certain urgency i have to cure this before i'm kicked out of house and home yeah and also get eaten by wild animals that's not fun again it's like summoning wolves <laughs> the closest analogy i can make here yeah it's wolves yeah 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 that, that's not fun that's not fun <laughs> Uh, but as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. I, I like how the ponies are supportive of Spike. This reminds me of that one episode. What was it? Season 2? Where he first met with the other dragons? Oh, uh, that would be Dragon Quest. Yeah, Dragon Quest. That was a really fun episode too because uh, the ponies are supportive of Spike. And in this episode too, uh, also does the same. And by the way... Uh, notice that Twilight and Rarity are the two ponies that are with Spike now. And in Dragon Quest, it was the same. I'm guessing Rainbow Dash was away at Wonderbolts. Yeah. Was Rainbow Dash there? I don't remember. She Well, she was. She was the head of the... Uh, ah, yes. Of the Crackle costume. Yeah. I, and was the one most eager to have a fight. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just remembering uh, highly of... Uh, what was it called? The one where Ember first appeared because it's Rarity and Twilight again. Oh, Gauntlet of Fire. Yes, they they are. Well, they're the two most prominent characters in his life, it seems. Yeah, true that, true that. Because, well, Twilight raised Spike from a baby and Spike has a huge crush on Rarity. So, yeah. But besides that, episode was fun. Ending was okay. And poor Spike has to accept the fate that he'll be just a friend. He's put into the friend zone permanently. Ooh. Not really a fan of the whole friend zone thing. It just seems like a silly... It's a silly topic. <laughs> Let's not go to the friend zone. It is a silly place. Yes, yes. But anywho... Right. <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, what are we going to do next week, Silver? Well, I think it's time that we talk to comics for a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to be at Legends of Magic number five. Yay! Number five is alive, and it stars Sonambula and a giant snake. For some reason, we're we're very much focused on reptiles this time. <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice that team. Uh, get this snakes off my plane. <laughs> I've had it with these mother flipping snakes in this mother flipping ancient Equestria. <laughs> Sweetie was gonna have fun. Yay! <laughs> but yes, next week we'll be doing uh, Legends of Magic issue five. So, yes, if you would like to, well, do subscribe to catch that one out, guys. And, well, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on YouTube under Silver Quill. You can find me on DeviantArt, where I post Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight Comics, Got, well, two more this month on account of both uh, the season finale and then a Christmas special in October. It's like we're in a retail store. <laughs> yeah, I reported on that and I was kind of peeved. You have the Christmas DVD coming out in November 26, which is kind of a nice time. It's not too soon, but it's not too late. Have all enough time to buy the DVD and give it to a brony friend. But no, you have to spoil it by putting a special on TV in October. What? Why not? I don't know. It's just like, maybe in the back of my mind, I think that you have a really good 
opportunity to sell DVDs, but no, you, you, it's just me. It's just it is all about the D, it is all about the DVD sales. It's air it now so kids will want to buy it at Christmas time. But at the same time, too, people won't be really interested because they already seen it. It's a cash twenty too, really. What can I say? It is the it is the fault of the internet age. You can basically get it on once it's aired on publicly. It's there in the wind. True, true. And you can't get it back. True, true. Ah, well, at least that's their Christmas special. Yay! Uh, anything else, Silva? Let's see. Also, I'll be on. I am on Equestria Daily every Wednesday with either an editorial or a review, and I'm here on the MBS show. Hello. Hey, yeah, Silver's here. Awesomeness. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. It does work, people. I've heard that it works somehow, yes. And Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio, which will, you're listening to it now, if you are listening it onto the YouTubes. There's a portable version to listen to this show. It's on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Um, I think uh, that's the best place to get it, yay, because you get a download and you can listen to us babble while you go jogging or while you go working out at the gym. Yes. Flex those muscles. A gym? What's a gym? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's where those Pokemon masters try to battle on each other. Well, you never know. In which case, I only recently saw that Brock could open his eyes all the way. <laughs> And it is a terror like none I've ever witnessed. <laughs> where? When? Uh, I think it was like in a special where where Ash and Pikachu return just to visit with everyone. Uh, let's see here. Brock, eyes open. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get nightmares for Google this. Google search. Oh, you ain't kidding. I, I, dude, I am going to break your mind here. I'll include a rarity reaction oh. just so... Just so you can have at least context. All right. Or someone to share your fear. That's cool, too. All right. You done? I'll, I'll just finish reading this up. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. And it is here. Let's see. Oh, my goodness. Oh, okay. Uh, loading and loading. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh, 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 wow. <coughs> um, yeah. Okay. Mm, yeah. <laughs> oh, my. Would you like some, would you like some demonic music and said, Kratos, Kratos, <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, my goodness. But anywho, yes, uh, talking about thank yous. I'd like to thank myself, Leg, Amy, Charles, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Lurker Cat, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys, for the awesome support. I will not torment you by showing what I just saw. <laughs> so, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecile Vecquin. And we'll, guys, catch you next week with another fun review. See ya. Behold Brock's terrifying eyes. No, I have to deal with Brock's scary eyes. Oh. We'll see you. I can't do scratchy teenage voice. It's really hard for me. I have stared into the abyss. <laughs> and it has stared back into me.